Do you want to debate, Steve? Right. If you don't want to debate, let me do a QA. and a Okay, right. So what, what are we going to debate? Whether Christians should support the Reform Party? Versus support Christian people. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to debate whether Christians should support the Christian People's Alliance or the Reform Party. Over to you, Steve. So, policies are obviously incredibly important when we all look at the ballot paper and decide who we want to vote for. But real politique, practicality, is also highly relevant. And I don't know the figures, but I'm guessing the Christian People's Alliance, is that what they're called? Yeah. I'm doubting that they've even ever achieved 1%. You know, there might be little pockets where they've just scraped 1%. They've not ever got into double figures. Reform UK are currently 18 to 20%, 18 to 22% in the national poll. Yeah. If you want to get your way of thinking into the real politics of this country, that, with the best will in the world, is never going to happen via the CPA. Something close to it might happen via reform. I think you need just a dose of reality and pragmatism that you are going to more likely get policies implemented in the UK government via Reform UK than you're ever going to get via the CPA. And I'm not saying small associations, small groupings can't have influence because Nigel Farage, prior to the last general election, has never stood in Parliament, yet he's one of the most influential people in British politics. Unfortunately, the CPA doesn't have its Nigel Farage, unless you're going to be the new Nigel Farage of the CPA. You, you may have something to tell us on that front, but the CPA doesn't have it. I couldn't name the single. I know Sid, who used to come here years ago. I think he was their leader. I only know him because I go to Speaker's Corner. You haven't got any leading lights. You don't get any press coverage. You don't, you, it's difficult to see how you're ever going to grow beyond half a percent, one percent. Right, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to try and direct. I, I'm going to suggest that we move our conversation just over here. So we're going to move our conversation just over here. <laughs> Sorry, we're going to just stand here. I mean, you can stand there if you want. Yeah, we'll stand here. Right, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you that want to hear our debate and discussion. So, Steve makes an argument, which is a valid argument. It's about political pragmatism. He makes an argument from real politics. And, and, and real politic, no worries, and real politic, ladies and gentlemen, is a correct, one of the correct frameworks by which we should study uh, and make political decisions. But it is also an aspect of real politic that unless you begin somewhere, you will achieve nothing. And to when the UKIP party started by Nigel Farage, at its very beginning, it got nowhere. It was a, a, a scrap of a party, strung together by, by minuscule support. But Nigel Farage ploughed on year after year, decade after decade, and has now become one of the most influential politicians since Margaret Thatcher, since Tony Blair. We Christians can embody a similar spirit, but we must begin somewhere. And you can't begin to have political influence until you build your own political institutions. We Christians have managed to win court cases because we set up the Christian Concern Legal Center. We've influenced public policy because we set up the Christian Institute. Well, there is an opportunity for Christians to affect elections by supporting Christian political parties. If Christians 
allow themselves to get into bed with unbelievers like Tim Farron has done, like Tony Blair did, like Gordon Brown did, like David Cameron did, they will dilute their faith so that they can sit within the wider body. And they dilute their faith so much that they lose influence. And that is exactly what will happen to Christians in the Reformed Party. And so I invite all the Christians inside the Reformed Party to leave and to join the Christian People's Alliance. And if you are already elected to change whip so that you become a standing member of the Christian People's Alliance. And I'm going to explain why in my next round that we Christians can't just make judgments by realpolitik. We must also base judgments upon the sound teaching of Scripture. Back to you, Steve. When, I forget which one it was, but when one of the speakers at yesterday and Friday's Reform Conference made the statement, we need to protect the Christian values, and in that statement they just said Christian, they weren't saying that they were Christian, Judeo-Christian, it got one of the biggest rounds of applause and cheers in the auditorium of 4,000 people. So, I think the Reform Party as a whole may be closer than you think you are. I agree with most of what you said, certainly in the first half of what you said. But just one very quick question with a, with a one-word answer, because that's all it needs. If you know the answer, how long has the Christian People's Alliance existed? Over 10 years. So it's been around for a long time. And so far, it's not making any advancements. You mentioned Christian concern. I, and again, I agree with you about Christian concern. Christian concern, I think probably, in the round, have achieved a lot more than the CPA, the Christian People's Alive. They have been at the forefront of defending and winning many cases, be it in employment tribunals or, or in other legal situations. So, you know, I very much admire Christian concern because they have worked very, very, very successfully to protect Christian brethren in, in the workplace and, and in other scenarios, but the Christian People's Alliance is not having that same success. Now, whether that's because you don't have a good, haven't had a good enough leader, I mean, I've no idea who your current leader is, whether you need better, stronger people involved in the Christian People's Alliance, because I see no signs of it making any progress politically whatsoever. And, and I know you're going to disagree with this next point. I don't think, as much as the auditorium of the Reform Conference, as much as the broader um, population may want these Christian values protected, I think the British people are uncomfortable with your mission to make Christianity political. They see that religion and politics are separate and that they should be maintained separately. It doesn't mean to say that the politicians can't espouse Christian-based policies, but to base their entire being in existence on their faith, I don't think that's a British cultural thing. That I know it's your thing, you think it absolutely should, and you think they're entwined and one isn't going to work without the other. But I don't think that's the natural position of Britain as a country, where people, I can say our then, I will say our, where our faith, our religion, our Christianity, we, we think of as separately to our religion. I know what you're going to come back and say it should be, and that's that. Can I problem. reply? So, off you go. So, firstly, let's all congratulate Steve on taking a step closer to oh, becoming okay. a Christian. I, I he's now, he's now do, said our faith. If you watch my first ever encounter with Steve, <laughs> you would not imagine the amount of progress that statement involves. <laughs> uh, go and compare the first encounter with Steve to this one. He's now saying our faith. But let's, I, I want to address a couple of points. Firstly, when the reformed auditorium clapped the idea of defending our Judeo or our Christian heritage, what does that mean to them? Do they just think that that means protecting Christmas and protecting Easter? Is that really what they think that is? Shall I actually spell out to you what a Christian culture looks like? A Christian culture means pro-life, not pro-choice. A Christian culture means no easy divorces, if divorce at all, ladies and gentlemen. 
A Christian culture means that marriage is defined as between a man and a woman. And that a man and a woman are objective realities. They are not changeable. A Christian culture, ladies and gentlemen, says that we base our politics not around the United Kingdom, but around Jesus Christ. It means a return to Section 28 and the outlawing of pro-LGBT politics in our schools. The banning of trans story time. It means the arrest and the prosecution of doctors who physically mutilated children by giving them irreversible treatments around gender. It means prosecuting abortion doctors. Is that what was meant inside the reform auditorium? Or did they just mean that they wanted a liberal culture with the equivalent of a sprinkling of hundreds and thousands on top? A nice Christian garnish where we all ignore the Christian way of life and we just make it into what we want it to be as liberals do. I've got another point. So that's my first point. What were they clapping for? What did they understand? Secondly, my second point, and then I'll return to let Steve reply. And notice, Steve, every time I talk, the crowd grows. Every time you talk, the crowd shrinks. We'll measure that. I'm just asking you to speak up. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, here's something that all the Christians in the Reformed Party should consider. It says in Scripture, do not be bound together with the unbelievers. For what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? Or what harmony has Christ with Belial? Or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? Or what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. Just as God said, I will dwell in them and walk amongst them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from their midst and be separate, says the Lord. In other words, Christians should separate themselves from the Reform Party and use their same energy and enthusiasm to build the Christian People's Alliance. And you can see that in 2 Corinthians from verse 14 onwards. I'm quite astounded. That, that second point that you've just made, I have to say I'm repulsed by. And even if, and this isn't going to happen, but even if I did become a Christian and pick up the faith, I would never in a billion years pick up that version of it. What was the very first sentence in that, in that second bit that you've just quoted? Okay. Quickly find the very first sentence or the first phrase. I'll just read it to you. Just the first bit. Do not be bound together with unbelievers for what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness, or what fellowship has light with darkness? So do not be bound with. And then, and, then you, and then you finish your section with that section basically by saying, so therefore people don't join reform. You're talking for division. Don't side with, don't campaign with, don't come together on mutual issues of, of, of understanding or mutual issues of agreement. What you're talking about is apartheid. You're saying Christian brothers and sisters, never work with them. Never work with an atheist or with a Jew or with a Sikh because they're not believers in Jesus. That's not a society I ever want to live in or work in. Or play in. Exactly, that's going to be my next point. It sounds very Muslim. Kafir, believer, Jew, Gentile. These are the aspects of religion that make me so firm in my atheism. One of the many aspects of religion that make me so firm in my atheism. Because religions divide. You divide amongst different mass religions. You divide amongst yourselves. You know, there'd be so many Christians that wholeheartedly disagree with so much of what you've just said. This is the division. What, where is the logic of saying, we may come together on points of agreement. Let's work together, hand in hand as people across the human race. But no, your message is don't do that. 
Don't work with the non-believer. Only work with people that believe the same as you. That is an awful message for humankind. An absolutely awful message for humankind. And in response to your first point, if I, if I can remember what your first point was, again, all those things you quoted are your version of Christianity. I'm not just saying uniquely yours, but they're, your, they're, they're, they're the brand of Christianity that you sign up to. There are so many Christians that don't sign up to that. You know, there are Christians that are pro-choice, that are heavily Christian in their faith. There are Christians that are, are, are okay with the laws and the rules around divorce, that are equally strong in their Christian faith. You, you, know, you gave a whole list of examples of things that frankly are quite extreme, I, I, I'm not a theo, the, 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 theologian, so I'm not going to be able to argue the, the theological argument against them all, but, and I probably shouldn't be saying this because I know he now will, I'm, I'm, I, I question the scriptural basis of all the points that you made. Um, but I'm going to regret saying that because he's now going to spend two hours pointing out the scriptural base of every single one of them, aren't you? Um, but again, it's just your brand of Christianity, again, is the least palatable brand, is not the brand of Christianity that most Christians sign up to. And again, you're going to say, and that's why we're Can all I reply? in the state we are, so off you go. Right, ladies and gentlemen. So you all, now notice the crowd's thinned out again. Now you all heard, brothers. You all heard. You all heard, brothers. You all heard, brothers. And sisters. Fair enough. <laughs> Brothers and sisters. You all heard. Brethren. There we go. You all heard brethren. The argument was, don't follow this kind of Christianity. It looks like Islam. We Christians don't decide which bits of our faith we follow by whether or not they look like Islam. Does not matter to me whether Christianity looks like Islam or not. I follow Jesus Christ wherever Jesus leads me. Where? Because Jesus is my shepherd. But I want to say to all of the Reformed Christian supporters, and we love Steve, and we love the fact that Steve is in the Reformed Party, but this is the man you're in bed with. A man None who, of them are in bed a, with me. A man who, a man who Most questions... Most of them I wouldn't want to be. Come on. A, man, a man who questions the integrity of your faith. A man who advocates for the dilution of your faith. A man who says, don't follow that bit. If I was ever to become a Christian, I wouldn't follow that bit. And that is exactly why that bit is in the Bible. Because when Christians get into bed with non-Christians like Steve, there's always a tug of war. And so I will ask Steve the next time he talks, if, God willing, reform defeats the Labour Party, and I pray that they do, and the Conservative Party, and, the Conservative Party, and I pray that they do, will Steve support Christians in restricting and abolishing abortion? Will Steve call with Christians for the prosecution of doctors who mutilated children? Will Steve call for the heavier policing uh, against Islamists who have persecuted Christians? Will Steve say that marriage should be defined as a man and a woman as genetically understood? Three no's and one yes. Sir. There you go. Three no's and one yes. In other words, if you get in bed with Steve politically, you will be forced to make a choice, O oh Christian. Will you surrender your faith for the good of the party to help Steve? Or will you eject Steve for the good of Christ in the party of the Reformed Party? And that's why Jesus said what he said. I'm going to land. Next point. Now, ladies and gentlemen. Now, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus himself said, if he says that I am a man about division, and there are lots of Christians who are not about division, then I want to point out to you that I am in good company as a Christian. Because this is what our Lord said. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. Jesus said, Therefore I say to you, any sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven people, but blasphemy against the Spirit shall not be forgiven. 
Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Will Steve support the reintroduction of blasphemy laws? Because Christians do support the idea of blasphemy laws. Just in relation to Christianity, no other. Yes. Very Muslim. So answer the questions. Answer the questions. What were the questions? What were the questions, Shake for? In Parliament. Am I going to support the banning of abortion? No. I, w I would. I Definition of marriage? I, I, I will review the age limits for abortion, and maybe they've gone too high, but abortion ain't going to be banned in any government of mine. Um, marriage between man and people. <laughs> no, I don't see why marriage should just be between men and women. Christians do not have a monopoly on the Institute of Marriage. That's fact. That's fact. There's been marriage across societies for millennia of people, people of all faiths and none. I told you I Well, anyway, you, know, you do not have a monopoly Keep on going, so Steve. Keep I going. Would, so I wouldn't ban marriage apart from between a man and a woman. So that's abortion, marriage. Um, what else was there? Uh, abortion, definition of marriage. Yeah. Prosecution of doctors who've mutilated children on the trans ideology train. Yes. Oh, so actually it was two yeses. So that was a yes. And, and then the other one was about Islamists persecuted. The, the yeah, we're heavier stronger. policing of yeah, Islamists I, I, I in our country. So actually, that, out of those four, that's two yeses and two noes. So, you know, the, the persecution, um, discrimination, discrimination, violence, burning religious buildings, we should be dealing with all of those crimes equally firmly and strongly. And I don't believe they are currently dealt with as firmly and strongly as they should. Um, and yes, the, the, the barbarism against young children deciding that they want to be a boy or a girl is, is outrageous, should be stopped. The CAS review should be fully implemented. The current government are pulling away from the CAS review. Um, so I think I'm pretty much completely with you around the whole trans. How about, how about teaching LGBT? Wait, 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 bro. Oh, oh yes, in clause 28. Yeah, no, no, he yeah, was yeah, yeah, Act 28. Of, of the introduction yeah, of Act 28. That, the devil is all in the detail, and you would say literally the devil is in the detail. Yes, I'm I would. Sure. Um, because should should children be actively taught a message that homosexuality is evil and sinful and they're not natural and they're wrong, or that their parents are evil, unnatural or wrong? No, they should not. Should five-year-olds be taught, or six or seven or ten-year-olds be taught about anal sex? Definitely not. So it's where you draw the line. And I think I probably would agree with you that the line has gone far, far too far in the wrong direction. And that primary school kids are being, you know, things are being discussed with primary school kids that's absolutely inappropriate and it's gone far, far too far. You know, on the subject of homosexuality as well as trans. But in terms of... Can I reply? In terms of going down this road of, of what you, I don't know, it'd be interesting to know. So this is a question for you. In your society, in your under your government, would you what would you be happy or even want children to be actively taught homosexuality is wrong, it's a sin, it's unnatural, it should not happen? Right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll start with Steve's question and then I'll make my other points. Would I want homosexuality to be, to be taught as a sin? Yes, because it is the practice. Sorry, the practice of homosexuality certainly is a sin. And I would want that to be taught in schools. But would I want homosexual people to be villainized or victimized? No. Why? Because they're human beings made in the image of God and they are worthy of the dignity that comes with the image of God. Just as I wouldn't want Muslims to be villainized in our educational system or Jews to be villainized in our educational system. But certainly the practice of homosexuality is a sin. But so is cheating on your wife. So is sex outside a marriage that is heterosexual. So is bisexuality. So is having sex with a dog. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve, Steve, I didn't interrupt you. I didn't interrupt you. No, and this is the point, ladies and gentlemen. And to all of you who are watching in reform, because Steve's starting to lose his concentration power now, right? For all of you who are watching for on reform, liberalism is here. 
progressive liberalism is here, Christianity is here. If you are a Christian, this is where you should be. And yes, so just do that again. Steve, so is here, so you are here, but Conservatives and Labour are over here. So let's let, let me, let, Steve, I didn't interrupt you. Let, uh, 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 second on, time. So progressive liberalism has gone out over into the deep sea. Liberalism is in the ocean, but it's more in the shallows. Where Christians need to be is on the rocks. The rock, Jesus Christ. That's where Christians need to be. And if you're in bed with the Reform Party, you must do one of two things. Either overwhelm people like Steve so that the Reform Party truly is a Christian party or leave the Reform Party and join a Christian party. Can Christians work with non-Christians? Yes! You said no. You're if you said Steve no. wants to join a Christian party, because even though he's not yet a disciple of Christ, he agrees with everything Christians stand for, and he wants to support what Christians want to achieve, then we can work with them. Because those are called in Scripture people of goodwill to whom the angels declared peace. Now Steve was right. Marriage is not owned by Christians. Marriage is owned by God. And when God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, God said, that Adam said this, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and he shall be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. That is the definition of marriage and it predates all governments, which means that no government has the right to redefine marriage away from how God defines marriage. Well, I'm not a historian, but is that statement even right? That Christianity predates all governments? There was no form of government anywhere. Anything that could be loosely referred to as a government, anywhere. Do you want an I answer to that? Uh, so I didn't say, ladies and gentlemen, that cre Christianity predates all governments. I said marriage predates all governments, and I pointed back to the first humans to demonstrate that it comes from God, so only God can define it, and no parliament has the power to redefine it, and so marriage is, always was, and always will be between a man and a woman. Do you want to continue or do you want to stop or take questions? Um, questions. Please. Right, we're going to take questions. If you've got a question for Steve or for me, say who your question is for and then ask your question. So, ladies and gentlemen, would I make the practice of homosexuality illegal? No. However, ladies and gentlemen, would I make it something that we promote? No. Would I say it's something that we should encourage? No. Something to celebrate? No. Something that you can do on the street? No. But would I criminalize it? No. We have two kinds of laws in this country. Criminal law and civil law. And I think the homosexuality should be dealt, or the practice of it, should be dealt under civil law when it is done on the street. But, but Next no, question. No yeah, go on, you come in. Sexual sex on the street between a married couple. No difference. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if a heterosexual couple had sex on the street, they should be fined, even if they're married. So same Wait, next, Gail Steve, Gray. take another question. Next question, Lee. No, someone else. Let someone else ask a question. Next question. Going once. So can I ask going twice. Question? Going, th go on. I'll ask for Steve. What are you, religious? No, I have to balance. Religious? Yeah. 
So what do you believe will happen to you? One question only, please. One, one question very, only. very tasty worm <laughs> And fungal food. Okay. And my DNA and my son. And maybe I'll leave a bit of an imprint on, on this one. I respect the honesty. Right, now let me, let me... Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Like what I'm about to say. Well, answer to the crowd for everybody, oh, well, so that they can well, all hear you. Move my head as I yeah, speak up, I see. I need more People training. are trying to hear you. <laughs> I'm trying to help you, bro. So it's back to the point that I said earlier that you absolutely love, and I think you've got a little bit of erection on it, to be honest. But um, um, sorry, stop it, about it. All right, it off. keep going. Um, anyway, so I am an atheist. I would still class myself as an atheist, but as other atheists have done, I am moving more to a position where I accept that much of my culture and much of my morality does emanate from a Christian background, a Christian heritage. And I probably wouldn't have even felt comfortable saying that, as you said. Ten six years ago, years, yeah. Six years ago. So I'm now accepting that. So maybe, I'm not sure yet, but maybe I'm moving more towards a cultural Christian position. Now, can I, re can I reply? I, I know, I, yeah, that'd be interesting to know, because I think you'll probably, you probably despise people that call themselves cultural Christians, or maybe not. Because, can I reply? Because you think, you know, you're either a Christian or you're not. But hopefully you'll be pragmatic and think, well, at least he's picking up and accepting the source of some of the Christian basis of, of his views and thoughts. Can I reply? Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, and it is good that Steve has recognised that his moral framework has come from Christianity. To Why? Some extent. Why? To some, extent. to some extent. Why? Because atheism cannot give you a moral framework. Atheism is simply a denial of the existence of God. It doesn't give you anything else. And that is why when our culture took the wrong turn in the 1790s and they rejected God and they rejected Christianity, they created another religion, a religion of humanity that borrowed from the scaffold of the Christian faith. And that's what Steve and other cultural Christians are now scrambling back up because having chucked themselves off with the new atheist movement, they realized they had no grounds underneath them and they had cut the iota of their own civilization. They hacked at the root of their own civilization. And now you see the new atheists becoming cultural Christians. Why? Because Christianity built the West. But you can't defend the West if you don't embrace Christianity for what it actually is. You can't fetishize Christianity. It's a whole package. If you just try to take little bits of it, your worldview becomes incoherent and you won't be able to sustain it or defend it over the long term. But I welcome the move towards cultural Christianity and we pray that it's a prelude to actual Christianity for Steve and all the others. Next question, wait, wait, questions, questions. Next question, go on. As a fellow atheist, if Steve, if you believe me and Steve are safe, we're going to go to hell when we die. So the question is, do I believe that uh, Steve and his soul will go to hell when they die? I am not their judge, but what I do know is those who deny Christ, having known who Christ is, will be judged on what they know. And I know that there is no other name under heaven by which man can be saved but the name of Jesus. And so you hold your soul in peril if you try to cross over to the other side of the great river without actually using the bridge when all before you are torrents and heavy currents and sea serpents and snakes and vipers to drag you down into the eternal death. Next, do you want to comment on the question before we move on and take um, another question? Oh yeah, so, and again, you know, this, this evidence is why I'm an atheist and I always will be an atheist. Because, because I could follow every tenant of Christianity, every moral principle of Christianity in how I live my life on a daily basis. I could follow every single instruction. But, if the one thing I fail to do is to believe and worship in the Lord, 
that in itself will be enough to condemn me for hell forever. Despite the fact that I've been a good person and have followed every single aspect, every single instruction, every single way of life, haven't broken any of them, just for not believing and worshipping in the Lord, he is so petulant, he's going to burn me in hell forever. That is a God I ain't ever going to worship, Bob. Okay. Ever. It's petulant, it's totally Any other questions? It's corrupt and it's immoral. Any other questions? You're not going to respond to them? No, no, we're doing questions. Any other, go on. In regards to abortion, now I know you want it completely banned, what would you consider to be a cut-off period? I don't know, because I'm not a, I'm not a, a, a whatever the, the name of the expert would be. The, Embryologist. An, an embryo, well, not embryology. Embryo is a very early stage of development. Yeah, embryologist. Um, but they only study up to a certain the, point. A doctor, so, a medical doctor. Yeah, no, okay. 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 Right. So I'm not an expert I, to I do, answer I do that. Have a, I, you know, in terms of I hear, and I don't know whether this is true, that the Labour part, the Labour government are considerate, considering making abortion up to nine months legal. That to me is crassly wrong that's, that's and evil and, and, and it, 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 it is murder. And, and it shouldn't be eight months, it shouldn't be seven months. But Not even seven the months. concept of abortion after one month is 20 is, weeks. Is, is can, can, I, can, 20 I, can I reply? So here's the problem with arguing the, for the legal abortion of children at any stage. And this is the problem is that from the earliest stage it is human life. Let's say you set the cutoff point at eight weeks or at 14 weeks. What about 13 weeks and six days? Are you really saying that at 13 weeks and six days it's not a life? But at, 30, but at 14 weeks it is? I.e. 13 weeks, six days plus one day? Like, that kind of logic is childish and stupid. So what does that logically imply? It drives us back to saying that there should be no abortion at any stage from conception without exception. So Ladies Ray, and gentlemen, let me Ray, finish. Let me finish. No, that's someone else to ask that question. So, ladies and gentlemen, the reality is, as Christians who are in the Reform Party, you need to ask yourself, who is going to dominate the Reform Party? Are you going to abandon Christian positions to acquiesce Steve's position? Or should you do the Christian thing and dominate Steve's position so that the Reform Party takes on a truly Christian position? Or leave and get involved in a Christian party where this is not even a debate for Christians? Next question. Let someone else ask a question. Any other questions? We'll come back to you if no one. If no one asks, I'll come back. Any other questions on the topic? Just following off from of my original point about, about heaven and all this stuff. As I understand it, I know right wing Christians have said to me, I'm going to go to hell, definitely. And apparently, if Adolf Hitler repented just before he blew his brains out, his soul could be in heaven. So you're saying to me, Adolf Hitler's soul could be in heaven, and I'm going to go to hell, despite the fact I've never hurt anyone, I believe in humanity, I respect everyone. The only thing I don't do is believe in God. I'm going to face eternal damnation in hell, and Hitler is up there in heaven. Okay, can I reply? Please reply. Right. So firstly, no Christian says if you blow your brains out, you're going to end up in heaven, because suicide is a cardinal sin. So that whole argument is just nonsense from the beginning. And I, and I am not bound or held to what every imaginary Christian says or what every ignorant Christian says. I have to defend what Christianity teaches, not fictional Christians, not ignorant Christian statements. So that's that dealt with. Secondly, do I personally believe that everyone who goes to hell is there forever and eternity? No. I believe, I believe that you are burnt up and you disappear, no, except, eternal. except for Lucifer and his angels and the Antichrist who burn for all eternity in hell, Hallelujah. ladies and gentlemen. But, ladies and gentlemen, if you reject God's free offer of salvation, you deserve hell. 
God has given it to you. If you insult God by rejecting it, and to address Steve's point, if I follow all the commandments except the one that says I should love and worship God, I'll go to hell. Well, I'll just point out to him that you haven't followed all the commandments, have you, ladies and gentlemen? You haven't, you haven't dealt with all the commandments, and nobody has. All have fallen short of the glory of God, and that's exactly why we need a saviour. And that's exactly why Jesus Christ came, because as Steve has demonstrated, as Steve has demonstrated, as Steve has demonstrated, he wouldn't be able to keep all the commandments. Steve, one second, Steve, Steve, let's just correct you on something. Steve, one second, one second. Steve, one second, one second. Steve, you've lost yourself. He asked me, you let me, I'll explain now. He asked me a question. I'm answering his question. Yeah? Did you know? I, I, uh, I, because it's relevant. It's relevant. I pivoted. It's relevant. It's relevant. Right, so you can now reply to my comments and we'll take another question. You made a point a few minutes ago about suicide. You genuinely think and believe yourself that suicide is an evil sin that your God is going to punish. That, that, that was your statement. Are you now asking questions? No, no, no I'm, I'm finished yet. Suicide. You know, if you know the first thing about suicide, a vast proportion of suicides are, are undertaken by people that are very unwell. Correct. That are, that are suffering very badly from mental health. Conditions. Absolutely. And those, that, that my is, comments don't I, apply I, I to. I don't know. Oh, oh right. So but if they were Christians, so, they so, have those so what sort of suicides does your comment apply to? Right, that's suicides someone else to ask a question. In, in what circumstances? Do you, so to the. Am I now taking questions from? Shall, shall we ask one another questions? All right. So we. No, no, no. no let him answer this first. So I'm, we, we're going to ask one another questions now. No. Do you want to ask a question? Let him do the final question, then we'll ask one another questions. Go on. It was related to the abortion. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you said that there's no circumstances in which abortion should be allowed. Correct. And, and as Steve said, how about if the mother's life is in danger? Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, an abortion is a murderous act designed to kill a human life. The idea that we would legalize murderous acts to take human life. I'm gonna hide under a. I've got a And my bed and my bed is open as I <laughs> Goodbye everybody who's gonna now leave us. Do you do, do you wanna I don't know how this might just be a shower. Yes, it might not last. Right. You there are hardy and are gonna stay here. I just want to address Steve's uh, qu uh, your question. The idea that as a society we would legalize deliberate acts to take human life is absolutely abhorrent. Any civilized society would not legalize abortion or euthanasia in any way. However, a, 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 there are examples of medical acts that are not designed to take human life, but their intention is to save human life. So for example, octopic pregnancies where the embryo is growing in the fallopian tube which will result in the death of the mother and the death of the baby in other words no matter what happens the baby is going to die anyway it cannot be saved it will just die the operation removes the fallopian tube and the ovaries connected to it or maybe the entire womb, I'm not sure, but it is not designed to deliberately kill a human life. It is an act to save a human life, and so in octopic pregnancies, we can perform an act that removes an embryo because the aim is not to kill the embryo, the embryo is going to die anyway. The aim is to save the mother's life. However, if a medical procedure is sacrificing the baby for the human life, for the mother's life, when there is a chance that both can be saved, that would be wrong. For example, taking cancer treatment. 
when you're pregnant and many brave saints who are now in heaven and celebrated by the church have literally done as all good mothers do have sacrificed their lives by not taking cancer treatment so that their child can be born and then they have died of the cancer which they refuse the cancer treatment for and these women should be celebrated as heroes because that is exactly what they are Blimey. now we'll take questions Blimey. from one another Blimey. I, I don't think this is a question or a point really but um we also oh, one of us mentioned about women that have been raped i Thank i just you. have to say there is something very deeply unsavory and unpleasant with religious men telling women you've got to hold the product of that awful horrific violent act on your body for nine months and then rear that child there's something very unsavory about men and invariably it is men telling women what to do in that scenario can i, I reply i find that repulsive Right, that wasn't a question, but let me just reply to the point anyway. Firstly, most of the people in the pro-life movement are women, not men. Actually, if you, if you go and look at the stats, men, women make up the majority of the pro-life movement. And when many of those women, not many, but a good number, a good number are women who've had abortions and have come to regret the murder of their own children. Many of, some of those women are even children who survived a botched abortion. Now, I want to, I want to, I want to ask, I want to ask Steve, do, I want to ask Steve a question. Does he agree with what is happening in, in death centers across the Western world, where when a child has a botched abortions, they are left on the table to die and denied no they are alive they are there you go so so steve no no steve doesn't know what he's talking about we're talking we're talking about breathing heart beating children who are left to die on tables we're not talking we're not there we go and that's the problem and that's the problem steve is now defending infanticide he's now defending literally killing babies there you go and i want to ask all you christians in reform is this the man that you can be in bed with politically do you disagree with the morning after pill yes well, at least you're consistent because as far as my understanding more morning after pill stops the fertilized egg implanting in the in the wall of the womb so you are consistent yes, yes. All, all abortion is wrong no matter how much it's procured wait i want to ask steve a question i want to ask steve this question we've already just filmed steve defending infanticide since steve agrees that we should deny medical treatment to children who have survived a botched abortion does he therefore also agree does he therefore also agree that we should be able to carry up abortion to nine months i've already answered that question now I? right that set me up for the next question like but it's now it's your right. turn to ask a question it's all a little ploy isn't it <laughs> yeah your why, question, why would you Steve. Ask me a question that I've already answered? Right, so he asked me a question. Oh, no, why would I ask him a question that he's already answered? To point this out that Steve's arguments are suffering from cognitive dissonance. Steve is against abortion up to nine months, and I applaud him for it. I agree with him, and I support him in his position. But Steve agrees that you should allow children who are breathing and whose hearts are beating and whose eyes the are blinking how are they breathing when, when they have the been brought out of the womb do not breathe. in a botched abortion to the die on the back. table and, and that loudly. is what is happening in abortion okay, okay, clinics fetuses embryos anything living within a womb is not breathing he doesn't un they take their first breath 
when they're born. We're talking the about bots. Steve, you've got to listen. Clears them the respiratory opening to their lungs. Steve, the you've got to listen to the question. Not, no, you just said they're breathing. We are they're talking breathing. about botched abortions, where the child is brought out of the womb and it is still breathing. Still. It is hard. Oh, I, it was it's breathing, breath. Before. Ladies and gentlemen, still breathing. Is and yes, inside the womb, the child is receiving oxygen. But not breathing. It is not those respirating no. through a beating heart that travels oxygenated you blood. You Here, there you go. Okay. No, you don't. You no, Lungs. what you need okay. for respiration is oxygenated blood and your heart to transport the oxygenated blood around your body. Your People lungs. with iron lungs do not breathe by their own lungs. They breathe by iron they, artificial they lungs, lungs and it is their heart their that moves the oxygenated blood. The diaphragm is not working. And the diaphragm is you know, what exercises the lungs. It springs in the air through the lungs. It, yes. it relaxes and air pushes its way into the lungs learn some physics Steve <coughs> therefore Steve has cognitive dissonance he supports infanticide on a botched these are, abortion these are but doesn't support nine-month abortion emotional response. Steve doesn't understand he the facts of this topic if, if, uh, if an abortion, shall we go back to having a conversation over wrong, heckling one another the embryo is alive on the table that's somehow worse than if it's killed within the woman's body I watch this your, is emotional right I, I watch your videos and I watch the video on the crusades and how you defended it and I really I'm, I'm a Christian and I really like the video peace be with you yeah yeah, so we're having a break. I really appreciate selfie. it. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. It's really good. I really appreciate it. I might it. have a card for you, babe. There you go, brother. Thank you so much. There you go. Right, ladies and gentlemen, shall we do it back to questions or do you want to stop or do you want to keep going? Right. Here, so, so, my point, so let's have closing remarks then. Here's my closing. No, we're going to do closing remarks. Here's my closing remarks. This debate was about whether Christians can and should be part of reform. You have heard Steve, who is a standing candidate for the I Reform was, Party. I'm not there. Oh, you're not anymore? I'm not standing there. Okay, you've heard Steve, who is a Reform Party supporter, yeah. advocate for infanticide, abortion, uh, homosexual marriage, uh, and a number of other things that Christians can't get in bed with. Your choices are simple Christians, if you are truly to be disciples of Christ. Option one, you create a party that, of the Reform Party that Steve doesn't want to belong to. That's your first option. Best of luck to you, I hope you succeed. Option number two, is you leave the Reform Party and you join a Christian party where these things won't even be a debate. Or option three, you dilute your Christianity and your convictions as a Christian so that you can continue to sit in bed with the likes of Steve, whom I love and respect, but whom a Christian can't support politically. Those are your options, Christian. Ask yourself, which is the more Christian option to perform? Right. Your My final comments. Is, I'm a supporter of reform. I have in the past stood for reform. I am not reform. I Fair enough. I don't decide their policy. What I've been expressing about marriage, about abortion, are my own personal views. They're, they are not the published views of reform. So to get that straight first. So, Bob presents one interpretation of Christianity, one view of what Christians should be, one view of what Christians Thank should you. support and what they should not support. His view, his interpretation is not the only view, is not the only interpretation. There are many Christians who are very comfortable with the positions that I have on certain subjects. This is just one view. My last point is, if you, whether you're a Christian of Bob's kind or another type of Christian, you have to be pragmatic. What are the biggest concerns and worries to you today in Great Britain? And which political party, which box on that ballot paper is most going to meet what you want? 
and I Christian People's very, Alliance. very much doubt that's ever going to be the CPA because currently and for the last 10 years they never get votes bigger than single figures, closer to 1% than 5%. True. Reform are probably in the round going to more closely represent the sorts of things that you believe in and want, so therefore put your X in the reform box and you will get something that's closer to what you want than you get under Keir Starmer currently. Steve, lovely debate. And that's how you do debates at Speaker's Thanks, Corner. Nice. Steve, don't go. I've got a gift for you. I'd also, also like to point out that I've presented a false choice for Muslim people or the Christians. Here you go. That's a gift for you, Steve. Oh, right, thank you. Got to look after yourself. Any piece, look after yourself.